Welcome to the Celebrate Brave podcast, the podcast for women in and around the tech industry. Every week, we dive into the conversations, frameworks, and best practices to help you stress less, work less, and earn a lot more. My name is Nicole Church Steinbach, your host and the international bravery coach for women in tech. Let's go. Welcome to this episode of the Celebrate Brave podcast. I have got a treat for you. I am welcoming Suzanne Müller, who I have known for over a decade, no, even longer, 13 years, 14 years. I was not a mom the first time we got to work together. We both lived in Germany. Suzanne is still in Germany, still, but more about that later. And she had the distinct pleasure of getting me to deliver things on time and survive. And then this year, she decided to do some coaching and became my client. I am so excited to share your story. We've known each other for so long. Is there anything I missed in the introduction that you want to add? No, I think that's lovely, actually. Awesome. Okay, cool. (laughs) That's awesome. I'm like... Uh, if I remember correctly, you may have even bribed me at some point with pretzels because I wasn't getting maybe, stuff maybe. ready. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I'm, I mean, I'm not sure if it's even 13 or 14 years. Might even be only 10. We know each other, but really? who knows? Mm-hmm. Wait, did we meet when I was expecting? Was I pregnant when we no, met? No, no. Um, I think you had your, I think your first one was still is that possible that you know your son was still super small is that true oh my gosh that's probably true yes and i visited you in uh where you still lived in oh god lyman yes exactly yes mm-hmm Oh my gosh, is that when we started? I liked you that much from the beginning. Of course. Of course I, <laughs> I just I, I just totally outed myself. Okay, so um it usually takes me a while to warm up to people. I like everyone, but it usually takes me a little bit to warm up yeah. to why I fit so well into Germany. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. so cool. Right? So I yeah, met you after. Mm-hmm. <gasps> See? Okay, so we just saw one of your magics, which is you're so wonderful at setting the record straight and correcting people (laughs) in such a heart-based way. I remember sitting in a meeting. It was when you were still working in enablement, learning, and Mm -hmm. talent and things like that. And you were so much, I mean, so much younger than everyone else in this room. That's when I was working on the transformational project. Mm-hmm. And we had it totally wrong, and you set us totally right. <laughs> and I remember being like, "Oh, that's a magic skill I could work on." <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's it gets funny when you're talking about travel plans, and you're like, "Oh yeah, you know, I've been to Tahiti." Well, you know, with ha- ha- Tahiti, I always connect people being really poor and the earthquake. And we're like. I think you might be thinking about Haiti. Not- yes. <laughs> that is such a beautiful way to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, y'all. We already got a benefit from this conversation. Well, <laughs> All right. No, but but uh, without bursting this call, like the introduction was really lovely. It was amazing. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. So, so we've been working together for six months, but of course we just totally outed how long we've been, yeah, how long we've been working together and Mm -hmm. working to make things better and support other people. So I know you have a ton of brave stories. Like for example, sitting in a meeting with a bunch of executives and gently and firmly letting us know that we are full of poo poo. <laughs> and this is actually the truth. Um, but which of the brave stories did you want to share today? Yes. I want to share the story of my big break, you could you could call it. Yeah, of me 
claiming back some, let's say, personal freedom and just doing what I want for the next nine months. Yes. So that's the story, story I want to share today. Mm -hmm. Oh my so. gosh. Okay. So, so you, okay. So to take everyone behind the curtain, you want to share the process of when we were coaching together and the decisions mm -hmm. that you made. Okay. Exactly. Wow. That's yes. great. So this is a really mm -hmm. present new story for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's uh hot off the press, you could say. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. So that's what I want to share. So where do you want to start? How do you want to start the conversation? Um, I would say let's start with, you know, where I was coming from a little okay. bit, you know, yeah. So, you know, as it is, when you finish studying, right, you graduate, you start with your first job. And um, yeah, I was I was always super ambitious, super committed. And I started at this huge software company, right, and worked my way, you know, up the different levels. And it's taken 10 years, roughly, in different roles and different areas to make it to manager level, have my own team of seven, which I was uh, incredibly proud of. But of course, it's also challenging, right? To have the first leadership experience. And um, you said but, seven people, right? Seven yes, people seven. was mm -hmm. your first team. Yes. My first okay. team also very multi-generational, very diverse, mm -hmm. you know, different, different regions, different countries, different ages. So and yeah, genders was, too, right? And you had a mix. As well, yeah. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So all in the mix. And um, yeah, that was very interesting. I learned a lot. It was also very challenging, of course. Um, but besides, you know, being um, on this corporate ladder, I always had very much this uh, need for freedom as well to see different cultures, to travel. That's why I also worked um, in other comp uh, on uh, other countries with the company. So I worked in Czech Republic for yeah. two years. I was in the U.S. for six months. And I really loved that immensely. But of course, with COVID, the pandemic was very difficult yeah. in the past years. And yeah, so I've always um, also looked other, up to other working models, especially the ones that I met in the or, at, or got to know in the U.S., um, so I, I had the pleasure to live together with somebody like an amazing lady, very beautiful, fully tattooed, you know, also on her face. And you, I'm from Germany, right? So if you know Germans, it's like, oh my God, what did she do? <laughs> you know? Well, also here in the U.S., also here in the U.S. <laughs> yes, at my true. daughter's birthday party, um, one of the moms came and her and her husband have neck tattoos and he mm -hmm. has um, top of the head tattoo. Mm -hmm. And I could tell that one of the other moms was like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. So totally here as well. So keep going. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, even my mom was like, oh my God, she's so beautiful. Why would she, you know, tattoo <laughs> like a tiny heart on her face? Why? Um, but yeah, that, that lady really went her own way. Like I loved her for it. She was a massage therapist. She went to school to be a nutritional coach. She had her own clothing line. She made um, jewelry as well. And she rented out her place on Airbnb. That's how I met her. And I was just incredibly impressed of how she just, you know, made her life her own. And she had so many different things she worked on. Because, mm. again, typical German, you know, it's uh, it's very different here. So if you have a hobby in Germany and you're incredibly good at it, usually people are still like, yeah, great that you have a hobby but learn something proper you know mm -hmm. you need a proper job usually it's not your hobby so you need the safety and this is where I got in touch the first time with somebody who was just so different than me but it was so unconventional and she still had an amazing life and yeah. you know I just loved hanging out with her and I was incredibly impressed so you know since then and that was already I think 10, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, something, you know, um, long time ago. And I was, that still stuck with me. You know, this, oh, there's something outside of this. I can do different things. I don't have to go with the flow always to yeah. be happy. And um, yeah, you know, I at the, at the end of last year, 
I had kind of reached my goal at the company, you know, to be manager, to finally have this responsibility. And I also loved that. But um, I still had this little seed, you could say, in my mind where I was like, hmm, you know, I've, I've been in this for, you know, a decade now. I'm still young. And I still want to see the other side of the world, you know, the one that's not so reliant on safety and always doing it the same way or how people expect you to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's when I decided to break out of this a little bit. Yeah. And Okay. I have to, I just have to interject really quickly. What amazes me about that is she's just living her life. She's not like living her life so that she can role model for this random, wonderful German woman who comes in for six months. She is living the life, which I'm sure she's changed a lot since then and Mm -hmm. decided how to redesign it or shift it or whatever the case may be. And that inspired you so much that you carried it with you. Mm -hmm. Yes, for such a long time. And you know, I'm not even in touch with her anymore. But it's it just left such an impression on me. It was such yeah. a breath of fresh air that it was yeah. really it really stuck with me. And I think that that's one of the bravest things that, like a brave gift that we give to other people, because when we when we just live the life we feel in that phase or holistically or whatever, when we live that life we feel we're here for. We give that gift to so many other people. Oh man, that's so incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, uh, you know, she, she doesn't even know about it. I'm sure. So who knows? You know, you could be a role model for somebody and not even know it just because you're being your own person. Yes. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I just had this happen to me. One of my clients was on my podcast, and it turns out that somebody she knows who I've never heard of and is in a totally different area of the world, has been listening to the podcast, found me over my hero, one of my heroes, Reshma Sojani. And I had no idea. I had no clue. And it reminded me again that when you and I have this conversation here, like I'm getting inspired. I'm getting brave anchored into me. So are you. But then we're gifting this to tons of other people. We may never, many of them, we will never, ever get to the honor of meeting them, learning Mm -hmm. their names and their stories. And yet here we are touching each other's lives. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's very powerful. (sighs) Oh, my gosh. Okay. So now that I've interrupted you 15 times, (laughs) but hey, you've known me for a decade. You know, that's how it goes. Get all excited. (laughs) So you mentioned nine months. Yes. So what is happening? Exactly. So I I took the decision to use the amazing benefits that the company is offer, offering um, where I'm working to take paid time off for nine months and uh, leave my job. Yeah. You know, I decided to step down and uh, yeah, just take the opportunity to travel nine months wherever I want to go to you know, different festivals, different, yeah, amazing events and places. And yeah, it was, you know, it sounds like it was super easy to decide for that because Mm -hmm. who wouldn't want nine months of paid vacation, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) But if you you know German culture and uh, yeah, when you're on the career path, right, this is sometimes... a little bit frowned upon, I would say, or people start <laughs> questioning, right? Why would she do that? But is she still so young? And, you know, mm-hmm. these these questions, that's usually the, the culture, a yeah? little bit the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah. So that's why, you know, it wasn't such an easy decision. Leading a team of seven for the first time for a year and then saying, mm-hmm. I'm just going to focus on you know, what I want fully for the next nine months right? and getting the buy-in from my managers because, yes. of course, you cannot just do that and, you know, drop your pen and say, hey, I'm gone. Of course, there's a lot of negotiation involved in that as well. Yeah, so difficult discussions. 
But um, yeah, I think with good arguments and some goodwill on the other side as well, the, yeah. the negotiations went well. And then I was able to wrap up my job pretty much in roughly two months, a little bit less. And mm -hmm. yeah, now in three days, two days <laughs> actually, <laughs> I am going on my trip and then I will be gone for nine months. And yeah, I have to say in the end, um, people have been so incredibly happy for me. There was not, not one person who said, Susanna, why, why are you doing this? Please don't. It's the worst decision of your life. Nobody said that. You know, people are popping out of the woodwork. Everybody says, I'm so jealous. I would also want to do that, but I can't because. Right. Or you're so brave, you know, for this. Yes. Yes. Yeah, a job, traveling alone in some of the parts of the trip just planning things people are like oh i wouldn't even you know i wouldn't even get there or yeah yeah it's, it's amazing yeah so, and there's the so prep. much <laughs> <laughs> there's so much prep that you unknowingly did so for example mm -hmm. the way that you are taking this time off is that you've been saving time It's a structure yes. that a lot of multinational tech companies offer. So for, for everyone where this idea is new, you have a certain set number of hours that you can either spend or you can save. And so I believe you've been saving, well, how, how many years have you been saving hours and days? I think I have oh, over a thousand I think oh around my gosh. 1,200 hours, I believe. So you can basically transform money and your salary into time, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, yes, yeah, so I did that. You can convert your bonus. That's what I did for, for a long time. And I had, I think, around 40 vacation days left. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. Was, And the rest, so from the past, and in Germany, we're lucky because up to a certain time, we could carry some vacation days over. So this was really the collection of my last 10 years um, right. working at the company. But yeah, right. I, I used all the time account that I had, all the rest yes. vacation days. And yes. yeah, it was, it was planned for a long time. Also hand over mm -hmm. to, to the next manager. Mm -hmm. Right. And you also saved, so you saved time, you saved money. So you're financially in a position yes. and everybody who listens to this podcast knows I'm a huge fan of unionization. I think it's fantastic. The destruction of unions is one of the reasons why my childhood ended up in welfare. You said in Germany, we're lucky and I'm just going to let everybody know No, Germans, multiple generations have really demanded to have a more equal or more balanced share between workers and um, company owners. And so those things are made possible with a structure and people who literally put their bodies on the lines, both in the United States and in Germany. And in Germany, it's just continued to grow over time. So I just wanted to stress that you and I have been working a lot on this. What do you mm -hmm. want to do for six months? But you have been preparing for a decade, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and so it was that last piece of going from the head into the heart, getting really clear, mm -hmm. and then communicating to other people. Because I think, but I'd love to hear your perspective. I mm -hmm. think that one of the reasons why people are coming out from the woodworks, like you said, they're like, oh my gosh, this is great. And why nobody said, ah, what are you doing? Is because you are so clear. You show up in those conversations with such confidence and calm and commitment to yourself. And people respond to that. So they hear this crazy thing and they're like, oh, wow. You know? What do you think? Why do you think people are responding that way to you? Yeah, I think I think that's also a reason. Also, I think it doesn't, you know, it doesn't happen so much and is then talked about so much. 
So yeah, you're, I think you're spot on because I'm also talking about it everywhere. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, you know, I'm gone for <laughs> nine months. Why don't you do the same? You know, you can do it. I'm advertising a little bit as well. Um, yeah. So, and, and I think also because I, you know, finally the, uh, the coin dropped, as we, as we say in Germany, that, yeah, you know, I'm an adult. The, the advantage of being an adult is I can do whatever I want. And say um, it again, say it again. The advantage can, of being an adult is I can do whatever I want. <laughs> yes. That's it. That's what you're always waiting for as a kid, right? You're like, oh, I wish I would be a grown up because then I could do X, right? Yeah. But then we kind of trap, trap us a little bit in all these things that we think we need. And of yeah. course, in what we think the others think. Yes. And I think, um, yes. yeah, once, once I liberated myself from that, also with the coaching, of course, that I understood people will think of me whatever they think of me, no, no matter what I do. I don't have an influence on that. I just have an influence on what I make of it and how much I care about it. And yeah, I think that's, that's also maybe a little bit unusual. So people see that as well. And they're like, oh, yeah, you can do that, right? It wasn't in my usual thought pattern, but sure, yeah, I can do it. Or I would like to do it. Why not? The best summation of the Build Your Brave framework I've heard so far. I got clear. I took action and I was accountable to myself. And I let other people have their responses and everybody got more brave. Oh, my mm -hmm. gosh. Yes. And I yes. think also, the, the, you know, the part about being accountable to myself, like clarity and being accountable to myself and what's good for me that's really where the coaching helped me the most i think because you know just to find out what's you know what's normal for me how do i want to work also what are my values and what's also okay to ask for for me because yeah. i always put other people first i put yes. work first I mean, not surprisingly, I had 40 vacation days left. That's when you yeah. move vacation or you do a lot of overtime. So you get used to that. And um, yeah, it was, I really had to change my thinking a little bit here with being accountable to myself and thinking, what do I really want? And it's totally okay to do a break of nine months. Because, you know, nothing is running away from me. I'll still have my working contract. I have the possibility to look for a new job, a new challenge inside the company. Yeah. I have my savings. So, yeah, I'm just gaining. And, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a way the clarity had to come first. I think we had many discussions mm -hmm. ah, where the mess in my head was just, <laughs> good God, so much. <laughs> And, and then, you, you know, you keep talking to your family as well about these things and friends. And you're like, oh, you, I just realized I kept talking about the same things over and over. You know, it was like just turning in circles. And mm -hmm. then, you know, the coaching really helped with getting a different perspective and sorting it out and asking, you know, behind this, the way I used to always do it. So why am I doing it? doing it how am, is this serving me personally you know okay. mm -hmm. yes yeah I I still remember the moment when you were like oh I'm an adult I can do what I want and I was like yeah yeah you can <laughs> and you're yes. like what mm -hmm. what Right, and you it know? sounds so stupid, right? And so easy. No, it doesn't. It doesn't I mean, sound stupid. It sounds well, so common. Yeah, I'm, yeah. It's but you would think, yeah, you know, everybody knows they're an adult and they can do what they want. But then the things pile up: insurance, you need yes. a place, you know, those commitments you have. Yeah, and then you think, mm, I, I have to, you know, yeah. instead of what do I want to. Exactly. I still, when I was still living in Germany and I had two small children, I had this experience and it, and I just want to stress that the person, because some parents out there are going to get their butts on fire about this one, but this person meant very, very well. 
Okay. So that's the first thing we really want to stress. This person met very well. Mm -hmm. It was a fellow woman who also had children. And she said something along the lines of like, but because I was taking on a really significant role growth and I had shared it with a few people and her response was, but you have two small children. You, you like, you can't, you shouldn't, das geht nicht. Like that's not, <laughs> that's not going or whatever, however you translate that. And without thinking, I had not done a lot of work. I mean, I was working with a coach, but it was more to help the executives who were putting me into the spot get comfortable. Like I got mm-hmm. clear so that they, they would feel comfortable because they also were a little nervous about my, uh, my used uterus as I like to call it. Um, but without thinking about it a lot, I said to her, it's because I have two small children that I follow my ambition. Mm-hmm. It's because of. They're not an excuse for me to hold myself back. They are the reason why I step up. And whether that's, you know, in a career or an art project, I have a a friend here who, when she um, got a little bit older and she was taking care of her parents who are, you know, they were both ill. One of them just passed. It was because of her obligations that she also traveled the world and saw the things she wanted to see while she was still healthy enough to really Mm -hmm. enjoy them and climb onto an elephant and jump out of this waterfall thingy, Mabobber, which just for the record, Nicole is not jumping out of anything moving, waterfalls, (laughs) helicopters, whatever. But it's because of those obligations, those responsibilities that, that we are called to follow our dreams just like you. I mean, I don't even know how many countries you're going to see, all these little job experiences you're going to have, like the art you're going to create. Because we haven't mentioned that you are super freaking creative. Like when I was in your apartment, you're like, and I made this and I made that and I made this. And I'm like, you did what? This is amazing. (laughs) Right? We have no idea what you're going to create in these nine months because you have obligations because you're part of a larger community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. And who knows, you know, I don't even know who, where I, I'm going to be or what I'm going to create. And that's the beauty in it that for once yeah. in my life and maybe for the first time, because I'm sure it won't be the last time that I want to go on a big adventure. So, Damn straight. It's not the last time. Yes. Actually, yes. <laughs> just, the, just the first one. <laughs> just the first. I love it. Oh my God, I love it. Oh man. So I know that you shared one person with us, your um, host. Was there another brave role model that you wanted to share with us? Uh, yeah, I think spontaneously I can come up with somebody else as well. So my, my best friend, <laughs> also, let's say a very you know, very unconventional person. Um, very, like, back in the day, super good with sports, um, you know, like, national uh, national team level. Um, not soccer, but, you know. Something else. Basketball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, so then, you know, as it is with sports, with sports, when you're really good and you want to make a career out of it, your health is very important. And if something happens like a, an ankle that's broken or a knee, you know, it's it's difficult. So that kind of happened to him. And um, yeah, so so let's say unconventional career because then he had like smaller jobs, you know, like some temporary things sometimes. and um, so. I think that was also like for a long time a struggle also because what other people say, right? What your parents want for you, these things. Um, But in the past years, like he was really the one who's let's, let's say who doesn't care what other people think. And he's very tough with that, with that attitude, much tougher than I am because I'm so, ah, 
you know. <laughs> Let's be kind to everybody. <laughs> so, so <laughs> he's, but, but he's a, he has a very realistic view on that. He's just like, I'm too old to, you know, hang out with people I don't like or, you know, do things that I don't want. And why should I care about things that people say? I'm too old for this. And he's also mm -hmm. been helping me a lot to, you know, get this in my head a bit yes. more. <laughs> and yes. that's, that's also really amazing. And I have to say, you know, he, he totally um, made something out of himself. He's also very creative, you know, in music and, um, yeah, well, well is uh, working on his producer career and he's just, you know, hey, I know I don't need that much money to live. I can, you know, do whatever I want. I would rather do that than have a job where I have to work like 40 to 60 weeks, uh, hours uh, a week in an office that would absolutely not be anything for me. And he, he's very clear. Yes. And he's very clear about that. He's been knowing that for you know, a long time. And it's it's great to have friends who have this attitude as well and this, this much clarity and also aren't afraid to tell you very directly <laughs> that yes. you're doing too much or that you have to check yourself. So, yeah, definitely with, you know, with this attitude, just being like, hey, I'm I'm living my own life. I don't care what anybody says. That's... You know, that's really, that has been super helpful and um, yeah, has taught me a lot as well in the past, <laughs> in the past years. Yeah, exactly. Because like the other side of the, I don't care what other people say coin that goes along with it is I care a lot more about me and my life and my dreams and how I'm spending my life and my time and what kind of legacy I'm created, creating. And with both sides of that coin, it becomes rather than like hostile or because we know those people who are like, I don't care. And they're rude and they're hostile and they run over small bunnies and things like that. <laughs> but what, what you're really describing is both sides of the coin. And often we, we, I mean, often I just had this in the last probably two weeks where I had to say to someone, I genuinely don't care about that. I don't want to hear about it anymore. That is not a part of my life. It's certainly not a part of my children's lives, right? But the the side of that, what's, what's motivating me to have that boundary and have that clarity is that I care so much more about my family values, the experiences that we're having, what we do and do not allow in our lives. Like that is... Just when we can have both sides of that coin, we, we have boundaries, we live the life that we want, and we don't harm other people. And I think that that's something that he has really role modeled for you because we've talked about him a yes. good bit. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm looking forward to meeting him at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, you know, it's, it's, you're totally right. You know, it's not about not caring about other people because that's a totally different thing. But there will be, if you want to do something, that's not the standard way to do it. There will be so many people who tell you, oh, you're stupid. Why are you doing this? This will never work. You know, aren't you afraid that this and this and this worst case scenario happens? But what what does that help you? It, it might happen out of concern or, you know, whatever reason. I mean, these people are also not saying it always to be mean, but it's just how how does it help you on your way? Usually... It helps you more if you don't listen to it. Yes. And I have a few people in my life because I lived in Germany for a very long time. And when I was sharing that I was leaving this global senior director role ooh la la, <laughs> to start my own business, wah, wah, right? One of them actually sent me an email with, I'm, I'm going to underestimate, I think it was 15 major concerns. Wow, no way. So wow. I, I mean, it was extensive. And wow. my first response was like, what the fuckity fuck? Like, do you not love me? Why are you doing this? And then, you know, I have my own coach. And my coach at the time um, said to me, 
can you imagine how much time it must have taken for this person to send you this email? To and drop this first and to send it right? <sighs> yes. Oh. It must. And I was like, oh my God, it was probably like 10 hours at least, right? Because the other thing is, look, y'all, my German is very, very good. I read novels. I hang out in German. My family speaks German. I love watching movies. If you guys have not watched Sissy on Netflix, Make it happen. It's so good. Okay, but there's only season one so far. So don't be as sad as I was when I didn't realize (laughs) that there's not the next season yet. But anyways, but reading a complicated German document is very hard. So this person not only had to think it through, draft it, craft it, but then had to simplify it so that I would really understand all of the risk I was taking. So, So my coach was like you know, can you imagine that? And then I started to think about it. And what I did is I took, I didn't answer the email. I picked up the phone and I called and I said, I thank you so much for your love. I just want you to know that I've got this. But what I did do with my business coach is I pulled out every single one of those risks and concerns and I made a plan. Smart. (laughs) Now I've been in business for three years, over three years, and only one of them has ever happened. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I got the plans, girl. I got the plans. And so it can come from this place of love. And it has to, like, the response has to come from clarity and authority of self, right? And and that person loved me a lot, loves me a lot. And so I needed to turn that into a loving sensation. But my first response was like, delete. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> then I had to it's, undelete it. Yeah, it's coming from this, you know. I just want you to be safe, you know. But safe, safe doesn't always get you where you want to be, right? I mean, if uh, if Edison or or somebody like that would have stopped at the two hundredth uh, light bulb, right? Where where would we be today? I mean, also nobody said to. Uh, Galileo Galilei. Hey, (laughs) we love your new model that you came up with, right? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, change makers, right? Or when we think about Arlon and the incredible investment um, portfolio that she has now, I mean, she was told until very recently it was all going to fail. Black women don't do that. And certainly not lesbian black women. And it's like, Well, thank if y'all have not read her book yet, please read it. But thank God that she's like, all right, thanks, thanks for the input. I'm gonna think that through and move on with my life because I got a lot of people's lives to change. And she is. She's out there really changing the world. So speaking of changing the world, you already talked about how coaching has helped you, but is there anything that you really wanted to hit that we haven't mentioned yet? Yeah, I think, you know, honestly, I'm not sure how much longer this whole process would have taken me (laughs) without coaching. I have to say much longer, definitely. And it would have been so much more agony, you know, internal self-made agony unnecessarily. So I think just it's, it's so important to not underestimate what coaching can do. And how helpful it is also to, you know, to do it over a long time. Because I think, you know, if we had just two months of coaching, that you know, it would have been helpful, but not like this. And to really have this continuous sessions, weekly sessions, I think that was, you know, I, I really needed the stability as well to, to get there. So I, yeah. That's, I think that's what, what I would still want to mention because I mean, I, I also, I studied psychology back in the day. So, you know, you would think that I should know how important coaching could be and how helpful it is. But then, you know, you still think about, yeah, at some point, maybe I'll take coaching and you don't even need, you know, you, you don't need a huge life event to, to do it. It's, you know, it's just, really good to talk to somebody who knows their stuff, you know, who's empathetic, who understands you and who really takes the time to sort things out with you because it's just, you know, you cannot do that 
similarly with friends or family. At least for me, it was very important to, you know, have this external system where it's really just about me and it's fine, whatever I can, I want to talk about, even it's, if we're turning in a circle. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you said that because it's, you know, in a business model, I, I played with a lot of different offers for a while, I think for like 18 months. And for me, it's just crucially important. And I think that this is true for every service or product. When someone pays for and invests their heart and their time and their bravery into something that they get a result. And I have seen the massive transformations that occur in a package in a time slot like six months. So that's how long we've worked together. And I still remember when you first reached out, I was so excited because you were someone that I just knew as like this very open, bright, huge smile, huge smile. And we got onto a call and everything was dark. And you were so weighed down. And I was like, what is going on? But you were ready. You were invested. You were ready to not, I don't want to say, I don't like this idea of like returning back to myself, right? Like when people have had their baby and they're like, I want to get back to my body. I'm like, well, baby, you had a baby. So it's a, <laughs> a body is gone. What do you mm-hmm. want? And And what I... What I love about a longer term engagement is that the people like you step towards something brand new that's even more you, like traveling the world for nine months. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited for you. So, for people who want to get massive inspiration potentially over the next nine months, or they want to know more about you and your experience, where can they connect with you? Um, LinkedIn, I think, would be the best place to connect with me. I will be that checking that the most in the next nine months. <laughs> um, email, not so much, you know, that's yeah. not my goal. <laughs> so, yeah, hit me up on LinkedIn, you know, I'm always happy to talk to new people to also share a little bit more of my experience. And yeah, I, I can just say it's been such a pleasure to work with you. And it's, yeah, really great to see the the progress. Also how, you know, how I feel how grounded I feel. It's just, it's just really cool. And it was so much fun to work with you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Highlight, thank highlights you. of my weeks. <laughs> oh, thank you. And it's, I mean, gosh, I've, I, even when we worked at the same company, it was fantastic to work with you. And that has only deepened through coaching. So thank you so much for your trust. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for your coaching and your time. (laughs) (sighs) All righty. Well, I hope you loved this conversation. And until next week, brave it up. Bye, everybody. Hey, before you go, our fellow women in tech really need these insights. So do them a favor, pop on over and leave a rating and a review on your favorite podcast platform. Help them find the Celebrate Brave podcast. All right. Thanks a bunch. Until next time, brave it up.